Hey, Armand here with your forecast for the week of December 3rd, 2023. We're already into December. Not so bad. Well, not so great. Hey, how about last week? Before we get to this week, how about last week, huh? That was something. The full moon in Gemini on Monday with Mercury squared to Neptune. Lots of confusion, lots of nebulousness. And I think that since Mars has gotten into Sagittarius, I have seen tempers flaring. Uh, I would have thought maybe more with Mars in Scorpio, that sort of defensive reactiveness. But it seems to me that Mars in Sagittarius, well, you know, because people want to act with Mars in a fire sign. He's going to be there to the end of the year, a little, a, little, a little beyond. But I think when Mars is in a fire sign, you know, we want to act, we want to move. And anything that is not moving fast enough creates a certain amount of frustration. And with that nebulous energy of Neptune and Mercury and so on, there's plenty of things we're not moving as smooth and fast as we might like. So I think that was a factor in there. And it continues to be a factor. And here we talk about this week. And you get the same message that's in the December forecast, which you can look up on the channel if you want. And uh, it's going to be the message, part of the message for just about every week in December, because we're really in the midst of it through December. We have why? Well, we have Mars and Sagittarius and that, you know, sense of the need to act. And, you know, it's a little, it's fiery. It's maybe somewhat polarizing. It's impatient. That's one thing. Mercury, the planet of communication and travel and commerce, is out of bounds. That is, he's beyond the orbit of the sun. Planets that are out of bounds tend to act erratically. So it's a little bit like Mercury retrograde, especially with him being in Sagittarius, where he doesn't, well, he's going to go into Capricorn, actually. He's in Capricorn for, the, uh, for this forecast. But wait. Um, but he's out of bounds until December 13th. And when he gets back into bounds, he goes retrograde and he comes back into Sagittarius by the end of the year. So we have this erratic mercurial energy. We have the nodes of the moon very close to the planet Eris, the goddess of discord. You know, interpret your own, interpret your own way, but of discord and disruption being part of the package for you know, really the time from October through December. And we've seen plenty of that. So we're in the midst of these uh, these times. And on top of all, we have a very active Neptunian period of time. As Neptune is very active all throughout the month of December, especially, well, including this week. At any rate, if not especially, then at least including this week, Neptune is very, very active. And that casts that kind of nebulous glow over things you know, less than realistic we'll talk about neptune in just a minute the whole thing though the whole thing about december is this is not a recipe for you to go and you know hide under the bed or even just sleep in the bed all month long you know the the point is that this is not a great time to get things done in that linear Saturnian step-by-step -step logical kind of way. Make your plans and follow through on them kind of thing. You know, just gonna, gonna, just gonna put the shoulder to the wheel and make stuff happen. Not a really good time for that. It doesn't mean that you can't do anything. You have to pay attention to your intuition. You have to pay attention to the signs that you get, the synchronicities. When they come your way, don't necessarily go out looking for them, but wait for them. And when you see them, you know, as I said in the monthly forecast, set your intention, let it go. You may very well get to your destination. You may get to some other destination that could be just as good or better. But either way, even if you get to your destination, your intended place, you're probably not going to get there on the path that you think. That's just the way it goes for most of uh, December and certainly for now. Let's pull it in a little bit and talk before we get to Neptune. We're going to talk about Venus because Venus, oh, you know, Venus has been in a, a place. Now, Venus is the planet of love, relationship, a lot to do with aesthetics, a lot to do with finances. But let's say love and relationship is the thing for many of us, socializing in general. Well, you'll recall that Venus was retrograde for a good part of the summer. She was retrograde in Leo, and then she finally went direct, got out of Leo, and then she went into Virgo, where she's like, you know, not exactly thrilled to be. 
Uh, so she's retrograde, and then she's in Virgo. And then she got into Libra. She got into Libra on November 8th, if memory serves. And that's her home sign. She loves to be in Libra. And uh, everything is great, except for the fact that all the other planets were in Earth and water signs. And so Venus is finally ready to play and nobody's around. And this is the case that's been pretty much for the uh, for the past few weeks since the beginning of November, about a month now. So uh, Venus is in her home sign where she's happy, ready to socialize, but not a lot of connections. And Venus, being the planet of relationship, really wants to be able to connect. This is kind of a little bit of like, you know, it's that disconnect. In one sense, we're ready. And on the other sense, it's like not quite yet. Even now that planets have gone into Sagittarius, they haven't really caught up with Venus. And so there's not, you know, there's not quite that energy or she hasn't, yeah, they haven't caught up with Venus because she's at the end of the sign. So, okay, so there's been a little bit of a thing for socializing and relationships, but we're still kind of a little bit on hold. Here's the thing. Venus is, uh, after her retrograde, she is the morning star. So since during her retrograde, but after the retrograde, she's a, the morning star, as opposed to the evening star. And in traditional astrology, Venus as the evening star is all about grace and beauty and love and wonderful things. But as the morning star, she rises before the sun, right? She brings the light of the sun before the sun, right? beautiful if you're out in the early morning before sunrise i'm told that venus is out there shining brightly and very beautiful that's terrific venus as the morning star however the bringer of light that sounds really nice until you recognize that the the latin term for bringer of light is lucifer and the association in traditional astrology is a little bit of sort of like stealing the light of the sun and Venus as the morning star was associated with, was considered to be a harbinger of war, which I wouldn't give much credence to. That's not, you know, I don't, I'm not the doom and gloom astrologer. Although indeed Venus as the morning star in October, we have the uh, war in Gaza. And believe it or not, the last time Venus was the morning star back in early 2022 was the beginning of the war in Ukraine. Not so good. Venus and the sun are kind of a, there's, there's a long angular relationship between them. They're, they're kind of far apart right now. So now she's rising ahead of the sun. She's kind of far apart. It, the whole thing is that relationship and socializing and stuff, it's not quite on the page. I mean, on the collective level, I mean, bad stuff happens. Uh, on a more like local level that we can deal with, though, it's not that easy, not that easy. So Venus is at the very end of her sign of Libra. And what happens? She's going to, on Sunday, we'll feel this Saturday night, the second, Sunday, the third, and going forward a little bit in the course of the week. Venus is square to Pluto. Pluto is in Capricorn. Now, Pluto, the power broker, is in Capricorn. Venus is in her own sign where she's all about grace and following the rules, especially at the end of Libra, the end of Libra, I'm sort of speaking to the astrologers and students here, I know, but bear with me a minute. At the end of Libra, she's in Saturn's deacon, the last 10 degrees is Saturn's condo out in Libra, and um that's not, that's not correct. Actually, the second 10 degrees is the is Saturn's kind of, but it's still Saturn's favorite sign. And so there's a little bit of a harmony with that Capricorn energy. and But the square to Pluto, the square to Pluto, that could be a real challenge, let's call it. Oh, like, like the challenge of remembering to put your cell phone off. That's another one. Um, so the... Um, the answer here is that uh, Pluto and Venus in a square relationship with each other suggests that there might be a bit of... Now, 
I can see on the collective level, this might have something to do with the way markets are running. Although this is happening on a Sunday, maybe we won't feel it directly. Um, I could see where things like, you know, mergers and acquisitions go this way or that. On a personal level, if you're in a relationship that is at a vulnerable point, right? If it, you're at a tipping point, things, you know, we're either going to get much closer or we're going to maybe separate. This will kind of indicate that this might be the time when you make that decision. There's a kind of no compromise kind of attitude about this. And Venus, of course, Venus loves to compromise. And Venus in Libra is a real compromise kind of uh, kind of placement. And you know, Capricorn is ready to do what's best, but it's Pluto. And I think Pluto is saying, you know, no compromise. So the negotiations and diplomacy become much more a matter of hard bargaining this weekend. The, the, as we begin uh, and then if venus is also getting the message from pluto because she's about to on the fourth go into his sign of scorpio as we we're saying you know it's not we're not all fun and games over here by the way venus will be the morning star until june of 2024 just, so you, just get used to it anyways i'm jumping back and forth over here what I could see with this Venus Pluto aspect is maybe there's some issues around like, hmm, do we get you that nice present or do we save the money? We'd like to have a great holiday party, but what's the budget for it? Uh, it it's that kind of thing, right? This is where I see things really playing out for most of us. Like we kind of want to get into the whole social fun thing, maybe the holidays or maybe just you know, we're ready to go have some fun. And, you know, it could simply be a matter of, I'd like to, I'd like to go out on a date, but I've got to work. Or, you know, I, it would be great if we would go out and do this. But again, like, what are the finances? You know, things, things like that. Um, depending upon where you are, you know, this could be a matter of, where you're going to live and you're going to buy a house, but what are the, where are the mortgage rates or, you know, all of these types of things between doing what you'd love to do and the necessities of things. This is the stress of Venus square Pluto peaking a bit on the third and fourth, but then coming into, then coming into the, uh, Venus goes into Scorpio and takes us really through, I think, December 28th of the Venus and Scorpio energy. All right. Keep that in mind. On Wednesday, Neptune stations to go direct. Neptune stations are times when we are not connecting with the Saturnian, here it is reality, the, the stuff of the world. This is a great time for meditation. You know, I reel off this list to you all the time. It's a great time for meditation. It's a great time for a walk on the beach or otherwise going out into nature. It is a great time to meander. Don't even have a destination in mind. Just go meander. Listen to music, fantasize, you know, write a short story about something, make up some music or something along those lines. It's playful and creative and you can find all kinds of things it comes from a very emotional place too it's not like just it's not uh intellectual play this is this is a very uh emotional kind of time so uh you know uh, get lost in the fog a little bit by all means uh, but this is not a time for making practical decisions and so tuesday wednesday and let's say going into thursday this is just this nebulous energy. Um, it's very easy, by the way. I know from experience, it is very easy to buy into buy into a reality that seems like it would be great. Great, great plan. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna open up a new store over, you know, something like that. You know, if you've got a store, you can open up things. Something like that. You get the idea. You're going to make up some new thing and it sounds great. And then you're going to wake up sooner or later and go, what were we thinking? So there's very nebulous energy at midweek. It's accompanied by Mercury 
who's now in Capricorn, in a nice trine to Jupiter, which sounds like it'd be lovely, except for the fact that that with Neptune station, you could really just shoot your mouth off about something that is just, you know, unrealistic. Let's put it that way. So the middle of the week is definitely a time to just sort of let things go and see what happens, particularly Tuesday and Wednesday. All right. So to recap after this, there was more introduction than forecast over here, but that's okay. We are looking at a sort of potentially tense energy on the weekend for socializing, romance, and things like that. The Venusian activities are under a little bit of stress. Not necessarily bad, actually. Um, and if again, if you're at a tipping point where you're thinking that things could get better, then that would be good. Um, and if things could, you know, things are going a different way, that could be good too. This is just the time for that sort of no compromise attitude. We get into a more conservative social vibe with Venus in Scorpio, and all of the above by midweek is overshadowed by Neptune taking us on a little ride. To, you know, it's the amusement park. And whether you wind up in the tunnel of love or the house of horrors or whatever it is, it's just an amusement park. You know, it's probably not that realistic. Be aware that often around Neptune stations, there is some big worry about a new virus or something like that that goes around. Uh, it's usually not substantiated. One of the things that made me realize that COVID was really something to worry about was that it, the news of it broke nowhere near any important Neptune aspects. And, oh, well, it's not Neptunian. Maybe there's something going on here. So, um, but watch and see, you know, you may, there may be some, often there's a little bit of a health crisis or some other kind of thing involving nebulous Neptunian stuff like uh, gaseousness or whatever. So, uh, have that in mind. Towards the end of the week, things settle down a little bit. We're getting more like a, uh, we're heading towards the new moon on the 12th. And so the energy sort of winds down a little bit. End of the week should be a little bit more manageable. And then there's next week, which we'll talk about, you know, next week.